everybody, welcome back to Critter Pulse. I'm Dr. Brian Moran. Wanna wanna thank you for joining us again. Today I wanted to talk about what is a veterinary specialist and, and specifically as a cardiologist, what does that mean for animals? Uh, what, what does being a, car, a veterinary cardiologist actually mean and what do we do? Uh, first off, a specialist is a veterinarian. So they've graduated veterinary school just like every other vet. They have elected to go on to advanced training in some chosen specialty, so some field. I have a link to the American Vet Med Association list of approved specialties down below so you can check that out and see how many different fields there are but long story short you pick surgery or medicine or oncology myself cardiology um, some of my friends neurology uh, dermatology ophthalmology tons and tons of possibilities here once you've selected to do that you have to apply you're interviewed go through all your fun process and then you begin your internship which is a one-year program where you rotate through either large animal or small animal medicine and surgery. So you get exposed to a little bit of everything for a straight year on either large animal, so horses, cows, goats, sheep, or small animals, dogs, cats. Um, once you've done that, you then go on to your residency. Uh, again, if selected, a lot of applications and paperwork and that stuff. In your residency, you've picked your specialty field. That's what you're focusing on and training on. Just like our MD counterparts, you can go on to be a true expert in, in a particular niche of the profession. This training program is multiple years. So a one-year internship and then a three-year residency. And in that time, you become an expert in this disease. You go through numerous testing, very rigorous standards, very rigorous uh, a structure to your program to make sure you've learned everything you need to learn and your mentors have have really shown you the full spectrum what i get a lot as a cardiologist is oh i didn't know there were there were doctors for heart disease in dogs i didn't know there were cardiologists for kitties well it turns out we're here but there's also a lot more that we do than just dogs and cats as a veterinarian i'm trained on all species as a cardiologist, I'm trained in the heart on all species. So I had to make a list, but here are some of the species that I treat on a frequent basis. Um, dogs and cats, absolutely the number one thing that I see. I will absolutely see horses. Uh, I see a fair number of them. And then, then it gets a little bit more exotic from there. So uh, some of the other ones that I've seen, sea otters, sea turtles, all kinds of birds, all the way from cockatiels uh, to Amazon parrots. Um, I've also seen a lot of African gray parrots as well. Uh, we see ferrets, rabbits, uh, pocket pets galore. So uh, uh, chinchillas, hamsters, hedgehogs, gerbils, um, guinea pigs, uh, rodents, so rats, um, some uh, goats, uh, cows, I think I said that, reptiles as well. So even when the hearts get a little bit different, still have to know about it. Uh, reptiles, bearded dragons, monitor lizards, and snakes uh, I've all personally seen in my career. Um, some of the, the neatest and most exciting that I've had the opportunity to be involved in are grizzly bears as well as polar bears. Uh, I was, was very fortunate to be able to help one of the local zoos and aquariums in, in care for their polar bears. So let's talk a bit about what a cardiologist does. So what is it that I do on a day-to-day -day basis and how is it that I help animals with heart disease? We're looking at trying to find what the disease is and how we can best manage that, be it medically or surgically. For every patient that I see, they of course receive a complete physical exam. So that's head to toe, we're listening to the heart, we're feeling the pulses, we're checking the mucous membranes, we're checking the gums, trying to, to figure out what hemodynamic consequence there may be to this disease that may or may not be present. Based on our auscultation, our listening, we usually will, will find something, an arrhythmia or abnormal heartbeat. We'll find a murmur, which is turbulence in the heart. And the other possibility is a gallop sound. So it kind of sounds like a horse running through the field. Da -da 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 -da. That all can represent different types of heart disease. And then it's my job to figure out what it is. So after the physical exam, I personally always complete a blood pressure assessment. So it's just like going to your doctor, We're gonna be a cuff on the arm, good squeeze, we're gonna get that blood pressure. I always do an EKG or ECG, also called electrocardiogram. And that's looking at the electrical activity of the heart, trying to determine is the axis normal? Are there any arrhythmias? Are the measurements normal? Which can indicate some of the chambers may be abnormal. Some of the other things that we 
we do after that would be the echocardiogram or the ultrasound. So this is where I use my ultrasound machine looking inside the heart. The beauty of this test is that it's completely non-invasive. Every now and then we have to shave a little patch of hair. The beauty of the ultrasound is that it's a non-invasive test where I actually get to look inside of the heart. So I get to see the valves, I get to see the chambers, I get to measure every single piece of the heart. And then I can actually use the technology on the machine called Doppler to determine if there is abnormal blood flow. So it's actually telling the computer to trace the red blood cells, see how they're moving, is it correct, is it incorrect, then I can get a measurement on all of this. Once I've established the disease, we then get to go into actual treatment options. So again, is this medication, is it a surgical disease, how can we then help this animal? We use the exact same approach and techniques as our human counterparts. Um, we follow the American Society of Echocardiography guidelines as far as getting measurements and how we do it. So it's really the exact same level of human medicine that we're providing for dogs and cats and horses and everything else. Depending on what we find or if it's been done or not done, other major tests that we need to do include laboratory studies. And that's essential because we've got to make sure we understand are the kidneys functioning? Are the electrolytes normal? Is there a problem? Is the liver happy? You know, what's going on? So these laboratory studies are super, super, super important. One of the things that your veterinarian probably is already doing as they're starting to worry about heart disease is getting some laboratory tests uh, going. That's very appropriate because we need to have a global assessment of this animal's health. Also, there are some blood tests out there that can be very, very useful in certain cardiac diseases. When compared to our human counterparts, we don't have quite as much as far as the cardiac enzyme panels that they can run in the uh, emergency rooms for heart attacks, but it's because we don't see the same diseases that, that humans will get with heart disease. But again, the blood tests are very, very important. Other tests that are, are essential and we use all the time are chest x-rays or RADs. This is radiographs of the chest where we're looking at the lungs, the heart, the vessels. We're looking at the trachea, the airway. We're trying to see is there fluid around the lungs? Is there fluid inside of the lungs? Are there broken bones? You know, why, why might this animal not be breathing well? Uh, and that can range from pneumonia to tracheal collapse to heart failure. And that's, that's where we really have to optimize our therapy and understand how aggressive are we being. A lot of people kind of confuse the echocardiogram or the ultrasound with the chest x-rays and wonder why oftentimes we need to do both. And that's a fair question, but it's an important answer. The chest x-rays kind of show you a picture of the outline of the heart. So you're really assessing the lungs and the vessels. The ultrasound is actually looking inside the heart. The ultrasound waves are attenuated by air, so I can't I can't really see inside the lungs to know what's going on because obviously they're full of air. But I can see inside the heart because it's full of fluid and I can distinguish the actual valves and follow the blood. So it is important we do both of those in many, many cases. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Dr. Brian Moran and as always, please feel free to like, subscribe, share this channel. I want to make sure that this is a resource for you. Leave questions and comments below uh, so that I can, I can work on how we can make a better video for you, what information you want to gain from this so that we can educate you about how a specialist can help your animal. Again, thank you so much and I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon.